evening and welcome to Meticulous Moments. My name is Jonita Kapp. You can reach me at meticulousmacarons at gmail.com or find me on LinkedIn. Since the COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, I've had the wonderful privilege to meet a wide array of fantastic individuals. These individuals have truly touched my life in so many positive ways. Amongst this group of people, there are authors, public speakers, life coaches, poets, leaders and visionaries. They are the unsung heroes of our time. Therefore, I decided to start the Meticulous Moments movement out of a sense of my gratitude. It is my way of giving back to the community. Let us share and reshare their stories in an effort to build a better society. This evening we are joined by the fabulous Captain John Cordell. Dr. Cordell is a retired Navy captain who commanded two ships, the USS Oscar Austin DDG-79 and San Jacinto CG-56 and retired as Chief of Staff for Commander Naval Service Force Atlantic. He received the 2010 US Navy League John Paul Jones and BUMED Epictetus Award for Inspirational Leadership, the USNI Proceedings Author of the Year, the SNA Literary Award, and the ASNE Solberg Award for Research in 2019. Welcome, Captain John Cordell. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Meticulous Moments. Today, we are spending some time with the very kind and sincere John Cordell. John, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, John. Would you please introduce yourself to the audience and tell them more about you? Okay, great. Um, I'll give you kind of the elevator speech. Uh, I'm a uh, retired U.S. Navy captain. Um, I spent 30 years in the Navy, grew up in, uh, uh, as a Navy brat. My father was also in for 30 years. Mom was a school teacher. Uh, went to high school in Rome, Georgia, went to the Naval Academy, and then uh, served on a variety of ships from uh, destroyers, cruisers, aircraft carriers. Uh, I was in the nuclear power field um, for our nuclear power ships and commanded USS Oscar Austin. You can see that in the background there. Um, wow. And then USS San Jacinto, um, which is a cruiser. Um, retired and went off and taught in industry for about six years, also working for the Navy. And then um, I had always been fascinated with this uh, sort of uh, fatigue, mitigation, crew endurance, and, uh, and an opportunity opened up in the Navy to come back and do that. I also got my, uh, my doctorate of, uh, of uh, engineering, and, uh, and now I've been working for the Navy for about two years as what's called a human factors engineer. So looking at, uh, at human performance, uh, both enhancement and, and barriers to, uh, to team performance. So uh, married wow. to uh, Goodrun, uh, who is a German that I met on a uh, 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 exchange tour in, in the town of Flensburg, Germany. And uh, we're about to celebrate 30 years. So, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Fantastic. Fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, 30 years is a, is a lovely accomplishment. We are very proud of you. <laughs> I'm just surprised you probably with this long. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that you guys are going to have a wonderful celebration and many more years, happy years together. Thank you. John, with your explanation about all the roles that you fulfilled in your life, I can see that you have vast experience in the area of leadership. And I read an article, um, a link that I found on LinkedIn that is titled Servant Leadership. Little things go a long way that you wrote. Can you please okay. elaborate on that for us? It was a wonderful article. Well, thanks. Um, so, you know, in, in, in the military, um, a lot of times people have this idea that, uh, that leadership consists of you just tell people what to do and they do it. And, uh, and, and it, 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 it's not individuals with their own motivations and challenges and things like that. And, and so sometimes we lose sight of that. And I think uh, what I found and what I learned from some of the leaders that I worked for is that uh, the more you pay attention to each person on your team, um, the better they will respond and, uh, and, uh, and follow you and do the things that you need them to do um, because they want to, not because they're told to, right? And so um, that article was actually prompted by a LinkedIn post uh, from a friend of mine um, oh. who actually posted that, hey, when I have a new sailor report to my ship, 
he was a submarine captain. Um, yeah. We go up to the to the to the bridge, and uh, we take a selfie. And then I he I get his parents' phone number, and I text the selfie and say, "Hey, your kid made it, and, uh, and he's in good hands." Wow. I'm like, "Oh, what a good idea! Why didn't I think of that?" You know. Um, so uh, so that's just Amazing. an example of what prompted the article. Um, yeah. And then if you look at the article, I just got a bunch of comments on LinkedIn about, hey, I used to do this. Yeah. I used to go, you know, cook in the mess line, or I used to go, uh, you know, have, have invite a sailor up for breakfast to see what he was thinking. And, and so it ended up being like 30 or 40 different things. So, yeah, but it's all about um, as a leader, um, how do you get to know your people, uh, the people that you're working with and, and that work for you? Um, and then how does, how do you adapt your leadership style to their um, uh, sort of psychology and, uh, um, yeah. And motivation, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. It does make sense that the leader must be uh, people centric, um, invested in the people's lives. You know, that sailor might have woken up that morning, maybe missing his family, going through something personal, and just taking that selfie with him could have just changed his day tremendously. And I found that in the teams that I've worked with before, if I know who they are, who their parents are, you know, what they are going through at home, if I ask now and again, well, how's that situation panning out? Then it, there is a relationship building that is formed. And you get, like you've said, the best out of that person. We should never forget to build a relationship with our team members. And I think what you are doing is going to have a tremendous effect on everyone involved because people want to be validated. They want to be acknowledged as being someone, not just a number, but a name, a person with feelings and emotions. So I think that's a wonderful movement that you've started. I saw all the reactions that you got on LinkedIn and it was amazing and they were all positive. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, that's true. Uh, um, th there was one negative one. Um, he said something like, uh, uh, you know, this is just pandering to uh, – uh, to make you feel good or something like that. Oh, um, my and that, uh, you know, the military is not about individualism. It's about being a team. And, oh. uh, you know, that, that's their opinion, but, uh, but I still think this has a place even as a team. So that's the great thing about I LinkedIn. You don't have to disagree. You don't have to agree with everybody, you know? Yeah, I didn't see that negative comment. I just saw all the positive ones. So, yes, of course, that person is allowed their opinion. But to my mind and the majority of people that responded, it is a very, very effective movement that you've started. And I know it's going to catch on and, you know, ignite the hearts of other people as well. Oh, thanks. Great. <laughs> Thank you, John. Now, I noticed in that post that you have a tattoo on your shoulder. Oh, Can yes. you tell us uh, more about this? I was wondering, is it Popeye or is it a sailor? Or no, it's uh, it's actually Charlie Brown. Oh, Charlie Brown, and, I uh, love it. And uh, give me, give me uh, about two seconds. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> so I, my dad was always a big fan of Charles Schultz and Snoopy and Charlie Brown. And then I found this, uh, you can see it without the light glare, this picture. I of love it. One of the Beautiful. drawings from a, from a Charlie Brown cartoon with him with his sailor cap and his uh, sea bag. And, yeah. uh, my wife has several tattoos and she had bugged me for years to get one, but I was always too much of a wimp. And, uh, and then, so I went in and I, I had to choose one that, that uh, tied me to the Navy, but back to my dad as well. So, uh, since he passed away about 25 years ago. So that's the story I of the tattoo. It. I was, uh, yeah. it's funny. I was in a, I was in a jacuzzi out in San Diego one time with a bunch of Navy SEALs and, and, and they had all, you know, daggers and snakes and dragons and, and, uh, one of these big dudes looked at my tattoo and he's like, oh, that, isn't that cute? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, hey, I'll take it. But uh, that's yeah. about it. It, hurt. it hurts. So I'm not doing another one, I don't think. <laughs> well, I've got four and I know it hurts. <laughs> so so yeah. let me tell you, your tattoo might not be a snake or a dragon, but it has significance. So wear it proudly. Thank you. Thank you. I do. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. 
I wanted to ask you my next question. Through all the years of active service in the Navy, what were the key lessons that you learned regarding leadership? We've learned now that you've fulfilled many roles, you've been on many ships before. What were those key lessons that you've learned? Okay. Um, well, you know, it's funny you ask that because I was thinking about this uh, this morning. Um, I kind of kept a notebook, not necessarily. I think at some point I actually had a notebook and now it's sort of in my head of uh, yeah. things that I will emulate from, from positive leaders and things that I'll never do that I watch negative leaders. And so, yeah. you know, if, if I were to recommend something for your listeners, it would be, you know, consciously think through that because you're watching people every day. And you kind of make mental notes, but if you don't think about it and digest it. Um, yeah. And so on the left side are things like, you know, yelling at people, um, mm -hmm. not listening to people, demeaning, degrading, insulting, harassing, um, all of which I've seen in leaders directed at people that they that they work with or work, that work mm -hmm. for them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen how that can just destroy people um, yeah. and then certainly demotivate them. You know, I, I had I had one boss that uh when I, did, when, I, when I left the ship in my checkout interview, I said, you know, I hate to tell you this, but I, I quit coming to you with stuff, right, good or bad, that I needed to tell you. It was my job to tell you. But yeah. your reaction was always so uh, over the top in a negative mm -hmm. way that, that I just avoided you, you know. And, and oh, yeah. by the way, everybody else does, too. Um, and so he was kind of shocked to hear that. But, uh, but I think he needed to because that was the way, you know, the, the department was running. So. Uh, on the positive side, what I've seen is uh, is back to that engagement piece, right? Um, uh, I had a captain, my first captain, uh, Barry Burroughs, that uh, you never knew where the, where he was going to pop up on the ship. And a lot of times, you see the, you have this vision of a captain sitting up in his cabin with a pipe and you know reading books or something. Um, <laughs> he was out and about, um, wow. and uh, but it wasn't in a in a way that he would catch you and get you in trouble. It was he wanted to know what you were doing. You know, I still yeah. remember one time a. Uh, um, uh, damage control drill we had like a fire drill and one of the uh drills was to carry a uh, a dummy who had been injured on the on the on the on the bridge uh or on, yeah. the, on the on the deck down to medical yeah. uh well he threw the dummy out and he goes let's see if you guys really know what you're doing and he laid into the cat into the the, the, the little gurney and let them <laughs> carry him about 500 feet through doors and and, and ladders and things yeah. like that so uh uh, he put, you know, it showed his people that he had faith, but it also, yeah. you know, showed that he was engaged. And so, uh, I mean, I've never yeah. forgotten that. That was 40 years ago. So you know, yeah. keep, keep, keep a list of good stuff and a list of bad stuff and, uh, and then just emulate the good stuff, you know, if that makes yeah. sense. It does. It does. I'm very happy that you told, um, you, you know, the leader that was screaming and kind of stifling everybody's. Uh, leadership and teamwork, what he had been doing, because I'm sure that he needed to know that and go and relook his life. And then for the for the other gentlemen, I'm, I enjoy people like that because they they are transformational leaders. You know, just popping in, not like you said, uh, like you said, not to see if you are working, but just to see what they are doing, um, having fun on the ship, and bringing the lighter side to life. Because you know, sometimes we get too serious about our tasks and our roles, and we have to also remember that we're working with people. We're not working with robots, and and that kind of uh, boosted the team role you know to do things like that and to have fun and to keep it interesting so i think he's a very interesting and colorful person <laughs> <laughs> no he definitely was he was definitely larger than life um but yeah no. <laughs> i love it yeah yeah wonderful wonderful are there any sea stories that you can share with us we would love to hear them i know you've got quite a few so please share share <laughs> i do um I'll, I'll share uh i thought about a couple that are uh that might be just interesting to sort of share what we actually do out there on ships you know yeah. sometimes you have this thing where this vision of you just kind of sail around and, and shoot guns and, and practice but you never do anything in real life and uh so I, it was my privilege to lead the crew of Oscar Austin, you can see behind me, um, on Operation Iraqi Freedom back in 2003. And so uh, we were over in the Persian Gulf and uh, and the, the, the war uh, was, you know, had not started yet. And so I, we had the plans, you know, on our desks, but we were waiting. And, uh, you know, this was the invasion of Iraq. Um, and, uh, and then one night... Um, we got the, the task to go launch these Tomahawk missiles, which would go in and sort of uh, attack the uh, the ground 
radars and communications uh, in, 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 in advance of, a, of the land forces coming into the country, right? And so uh, I had been told many times by other people that, hey, when, when it really comes down to it, be careful that some of your crew are going to, they're going to, they're, they're not going to want to do this, right? Or they're going to have, they're gonna, it's going to stress them out so much that they're actually going into battle, you know? Um, yes. And I, and it didn't happen. And, and so uh, I still remember somehow we had kind of jury rigged. Uh, CNN was up on the big screen down in combat, uh, wow. which is the ship's information center where the, where the captain sits. Um, and then on the other screen was uh, the radar picture of, you know, the, the area. And uh, yeah. on the CNN screen, you could see it was Christian Amapur talking about at the time, you know, in Baghdad. Um, and the advertise had been shock and awe was going to be the, the, the name of the attack. And, and that had gotten yeah. out. And so, so she was on TV kind of saying, well, another night of shock and awe where nothing's happening in Baghdad. And uh, meanwhile, the other screen, you could see about 200 Tomahawk missiles flying about an hour and a half towards the city that she was in. Um, and, then, and then you saw the explosions on the back of the screen. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and so, you know, you could see in real time, literally, our, our impact as a crew, uh, not just us. There were hundreds of ships out there. You could see the missiles at night. Um, yeah. just everywhere going. Right. Um, and then, so fast forward about 10 years, and I'm in a class with a Marine. Um, and I told that story. Um, and he, he stood up and came across the room and shook my hand and I said, what's up? And he goes, well, I was one of the Marines who had to walk through that corridor, um, where you blew up all the comms and the, uh, and the missiles. Um, and so yes. thank you. <laughs> um, so it's a small world, but it was pretty cool. You know, um, it's a small world. How did you feel? When that Marine walked up to you and shook your hand after years, you know, years that have passed, you right. saved him and team. What was that feeling like? Oh, it, it felt great. It felt very, very validated. And, uh, um, you know, and just as a, as a little aside, so Oscar Austin uh, was a young Marine who uh, was killed in Vietnam protecting oh. his, uh, his teammates. He uh, took a hand grenade and jumped on it and, mm -hmm. and uh, saved some, saved a couple of his comrades life, but lost his own. So, uh, you know, that kind of closed yeah. the loop for that, but that was really, really cool. So yeah, I think that's a good sea story to, you know, to, to demonstrate. Some, but yeah, that Amazing. was, a, that was kind of a high imagine. point. Yeah. So you were literally sitting there and you saw on the one screen CNN, uh, you know, reporting back on what was going to happen and what was happening. And on the right. other side, you saw what was really happening and the right. missiles flew, and you saw it behind the reporters, how the missiles fell. And yeah, that is so unique. Oh, absolutely. That's and that's one of the things that's one of the things about the Navy is uh, is uh, you do stuff that nobody else does. You know, yeah. um, as, as I joke, you know, where else can you blow things up and, and drive ships and drive boats for free <laughs> and get paid for it? So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, that was very satisfying, I think, both to be part. Of. On the other hand, um, you know, you'd like to go 30 years and not have to launch a weapon in anger. Um, that's cool. kind of the point of deterrence, and things like that. So, um um, I always thought back to, you know, I had a, another experience a few years before that when I was department head where we didn't launch missiles. It was a very close uh, thing. And the crew was very disappointed. We were very, very deflated. And the captain came down and called everybody together and said, hey, you know, we were ready. OK, um, but nobody died today, you know. And so at, at the end of the day, that, that's OK. You know, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes. Uh, so we forget that, uh, you know, you, you build armies and navies, but you really do hope that you don't have to use them, you know? Yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. War is so devastating. And we understand yep. that you have to be trained, you know, to protect your country, of course. And we have to protect the innocent. But still, I agree with the cap captain that day that at least no one perished. No one, you know, was killed that day. So that right. it was right. a good day. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me, John, what was the routine like when you were in the Navy? What did you do in the morning? How were the, you know, how did you spend the evenings? I'm very interested to learn more. Okay. Well, shipboard life is really unique. Um, it's a, it never sleeps, right? The ship is underway. Uh, most of my ships have either gas turbine or nuclear powered uh, engines. And uh, wow. you, you know, you, you're steaming someplace overnight or weeks at a time, or you're out and patrolling or something like that. So if you, if you think about an office, right? Um, yeah. it's dark all the time, most of it. Um, and, uh, yeah. but it's operating 24 seven. So you have people that are operating the radars, the, uh, the weapon systems, yeah. the, you know, the sensors, um, they call it a watch station. So you might be sitting at a console. Well, there's always somebody at that console. So typically we have three or four people who rotate. 
So if I'm one of those rotating watch standers, my workday is centered around my watch station, right? Um, and so you've got about a third of the crew any given time that's up and awake standing a watch, whether it's on the bridge, mm -hmm. looking out the windows, looking at a radar, uh, maintaining the engines. Um, yeah. So that's about an eight hour piece of the day that you're, you know, either bro sometimes broken into two watches um, yeah. that you're just sort of operating the equipment. Um, then you have to maintain the equipment and do training. And mm -hmm. so the other eight hours of that day is probably spent um, either in, in a couple hours of training. Mm -hmm. You always have paperwork, you know, they, have, they, they, they made this uh, kind of a, a move to the paperless Navy a few years ago that uh, I think generated more paper writing about the paperless uh, how to be paperless. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot of paperwork involved. So it's kind of drudgery. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the time you're spent either maintaining, you know, um, there's no, there's no garage to pull the ship into. There's no, you know, calling the plumber if the, if the toilet's clogged, it's sailors. And so um, yeah. there's skill sets on the ship from everything from, from, from plumbing uh, to uh, machine, you know, engine repair, radar, uh, troubleshooting, computers, and so uh, each of those has a skill set and they'll spend most of their work day, you know, doing repairs or what we call preventive maintenance. So oh. you, uh, you take it apart, put it back together to make sure that everything's, you know, still working. Um, wow. And then you sleep. And so a sailor, uh, if you're an officer, you typically have one or two people in what's called a stateroom. Um, uh, and, and, you know, you, that's where you live. And, and mostly a lot of us work out of our stateroom with a desk there. It's probably probably 10 feet by 12 feet. Um, yeah. If you're enlisted, uh, junior uh, sailor, you're probably in a room with 30 to 60 of your best friends, um, oh, three yes. high. Um, and uh, it's a hustle and bustle down there all the time because people are getting up and you know going on watch and things like that. You know, one of the things that, that I worked uh, and still work in is uh, the area of what's called circadian watches. Um, that's the science right. of sleep, which is sort of the field that I'm in now. Um, yeah. and the Navy adopted that about five years ago where they said, hey, look, we're going to mandate that your watch rotation will synchronize with your sleep rotation. Um, oh, you sleep yeah. at the same time every day. And that's been kind of a revolution, yeah. I think, in, in combating because one of your biggest enemies out there is fatigue. Um, yes. And uh, because, uh, you know, you have a finite number of people. If something breaks, you have to go fix it. And so, yeah. you know, we've, we've struggled with that for decades. And uh and I think we're, we're making some strides there now. But, yeah, that's kind of what, you know, it's a very uh, collegial environment. There's 300 sailors on a ship that size, um, yeah. broken up into five departments of about, you know, 75 each, uh, and then divisions of about a dozen each. And so that division really becomes your family. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, you know, if you spend 60, 80, 180, 200 days uh, wow. in that ship, um, yeah. now you do pull into ports, COVID notwithstanding, um, Every couple of months or every month or so, you would pull into a foreign port. You know, I've been to like 32 countries uh, through the Navy, wow. from Mombasa, Kenya, to Greece, to Poland. Um, and you pull in typically for four or five days, and people have time off to go travel and see the sites. And we I do like relief it. projects uh, for like a church or a school, you know, painting or clearing out brush. And so we try to be, you know, get some, get some downtime, but also be goodwill ambassadors when we can. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a really neat way to live. Um, but, you know, family separation is probably the most difficult thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, six months at a time. Uh, I think I've done mm -hmm. seven deployments over my 30 years. Um, some folks have done more. Um, and uh, it's tough, you know. And so we ask a lot of our sailors. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, most of them, you know, that's one thing that kept me in the Navy for so long was just the quality of the people and the dedication and the, mm -hmm. and the, the attitude mm -hmm. of, hey, let's just get this done, you know. Let's be there yeah. for each other, so. Wow. Um, that's a long answer to a short question, but yeah, that's kind of what it's like. Um, I love it's loud. it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's loud all the time, uh, between <laughs> whistles and bells noisy? and engines and stuff. Um, <laughs> yes, but, uh, but no, it's good. It's good. I always tell people, you know, people think when you go to hospital for a for an operation that you sleep more there. You actually sleep the less there because it's noisy all the time. Oh, yeah. And then they wake you up to give you a sleeping pill or something, right? No, yeah. no, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, so, so no, it's a, it's a unique way of life. Um, and, uh, you know, I would come home and all my clothes would smell like motor oil and, and, uh, yeah. and sort of fried food and stuff like that, no matter how often you wash them. Um, so yeah. one of our, one of our rules was, uh, so my wife and I had two rules. Number one, um, yeah. to, you know, when I come home, the uniform goes in the, in the laundry, no matter what. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. and then number two, um, you know, the Navy have to wear black socks and, uh, I'll send you this article that my wife wrote. 
um, about being a Navy yeah. spouse um, called Black cool. Sox. And so, yeah. as you probably know, um, you know, your, your significant other is interested in what you do at work, but not all that interested. And, uh, <laughs> and so I would come home and tell her all this stuff about work. And, and she'd say, you know, that, that's great, but I don't really care. Um, but she <laughs> let me go as long as I had my black socks on. And so as soon yeah. as my, my black socks came off, um, then let's put work aside and let's be family. And so uh, that was wow. our, our house rule for that. And it worked out really well, I think. Wow. Um, that's but, uh, I'll send you that article. Group. I, I would love to read that, please, and thank you. <laughs> sure, sure, no problem. Yeah. I, I was thinking as you were talking that, um, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful, as you said, a revolutionary move in the right direction to have sailors sleep the same time every day because they also need to go into that REM sleep and interruption of sleep right. and fatigue can be detrimental to our focus. Oh, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. huge science wow. that, uh, that we kind of ignored for a long time, but I think we're, we're turning yeah. that corner now. Yeah. Wonderful step in the right direction. I would love to also learn more about that. So if you have any articles as you progress, please keep okay. sending me those links. Uh, I actually have a book I can show you. It's on Amazon um, where we kind of tell the story. It's called Going Circadian. Uh, and I, I can send you the link if you like. Um, but uh, I, I've written about a dozen articles over the years, and then I just got on uh, the direct publishing and, and strung them all together and, and put a book together. So I think I've sold like 10 copies, but uh, be happy to send you, be happy to, to uh, send you the link and you can share it. Wonderful. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to read it. I'm going to definitely read it. And I've got a totally different picture in my mind now about what the Navy is about. And oh, it wow. sounds like a lovely profession. It really sounds like a lovely profession with good, uh, you know, development, leadership, skill development. And also you got to see 32 countries. You, you got to travel. Oh, yeah. And you got to do community upliftment wherever you went. And that is fantastic to me. Well, oh, great. Wonderful. So tell me, um, where does discipline fit into the concept of leadership because I know that you have to be disciplined on the ship. Um, I know there's probably a certain time frame for a skill set, as you mentioned, to develop for each sailor. What type of discipline, where does that fit into leadership when you are in the Navy specifically? No, that, that's a great question. So a couple of things, um, you know, as a teenager, um, I had almost no, I mean, my parents kept me, they were fairly strict, but I, uh, but, you know, I slept in, I was late for stuff, I missed things, I didn't do my homework. Um, uh, my mm -hmm. self-discipline was was lacking at best. You know, I tell people I was 18, I had straight A's because I, I, you know, I wow. was pretty good in school. Um, but I was also in a rock band and and, uh, and, uh, oh, yeah. and I, somehow I was torn about what the future held, you know. And, uh, and my dad wasn't, though, because one day he sort of sat me down and said, son, you're 18. I'm not paying for college. You're not living in my house. Um, here's an application for the Naval Academy and, uh, and you can leave when you filled it out. And so, uh, so that was one form of discipline, right? Was, uh, yeah. you know, uh, sort of yeah. inflicting it upon someone. Um, in the Navy, I think what you learn is that your punctuality, your mm -hmm. uh, being prepared mm -hmm. for the job, for the watch, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, impacts the entire crew and the mission. Mm -hmm. And so, so discipline becomes a necessary piece of the day that, wow. uh, you know, if you have a group that's supposed to hold training at 10 o'clock and one person's late, then if you if he's five minutes late, that's a man hour that you've wasted of, of people's time. Yes. And so, uh, um, you know, it's very important to uh, to understand that when you show up for your workspace, it goes back to the sleep thing. Right. Is I can give you time yes. to sleep, but if you don't sleep, mm -hmm. um, that shows a lack of discipline because you're not prepared for the watch or the work. And so True. I think we learn that it's enforced both in a positive way. Um, sometimes in a negative way, you know, one of the things that, you know, one of the strange things of being a captain is uh, um, you kind of have to have some authorities out there on the, mm -hmm. on the, on the sea that you don't have, that no one else has back ashore, um, mm -hmm. which includes taking people to what's called captain's mast. So we often think of discipline in a negative sense of being disciplined, right? Um, yes. But, but you have, uh, you know, as a captain, you have the authority uh, to take someone to mast and you can take away their pay. You can take away their freedom. You can restrict them to the yeah. ship. Um, you can reduce their rank um, mm -hmm. and you can kick them out of the Navy, depending on what they did. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I had to utilize that exercise, that, that responsibility many times. Um, yeah. And every time I did it, I usually had to take about an hour to sort of lay down and, and, and I was just 
just you know tore up about it because uh, mm-hmm. a lot of those sailors had been doing great stuff until they, they somehow did something stupid on Liberty or, yeah. uh, or got tempted and stole something or mm-hmm. um, you know somehow took a shortcut that, that endangered other sailors. Um, even yeah. if they were trying to do the right thing, it's still a problem. Yeah. And so, so that yes. discipline becomes, you know, uh, there's a great uh, saying that one of my friends said is that, that you know, there's a right way to do things and an easy way. And, uh, wow. and our job as leaders is to make the easy way, the right, make the right way, the easy way. Right. Mm-hmm. So people don't take shortcuts. They, they say, well, I can't get that part. So I'll use this one or I can't get the right lubricant for the engine. I'll just find something else. Um, you really can't operate a ship that way. And it's so fine. people have to have Absolutely. the discipline. Um, yeah. and, and with that, yeah. uh, you know, a necessary piece of that is training, right? Is so they have to mm-hmm. understand how the stuff works, what mm-hmm. their job mm-hmm. is, so that they can adhere yeah. to the rules, right? Um, but no, yeah. it's a, and I think, you know, one final thought on that, that's something that I think uh, gets lost in the translation when military people get out and go to the private sector. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the folks in the private sector uh, are more like I would have been if I had not gone to the military. And, uh, mm-hmm. and they, they, get, they sort of have a, an adverse reaction. My brother-in-law got out and went to a software company. And like in the mm-hmm. first two weeks, he had, he had come in early and left late and reorganized everything. And, and he's like, you people can't work like this. And uh, his boss called him and is like, hey, Brian, you, you need to calm down a little bit. You know, you're, <laughs> you're really taking people off. Um, but, uh, but, you know, that was his work ethic was, hey, we have to, you know, this thing's due on Friday. We have to turn it in on yeah. Friday, you know, yeah. and, the, and the rest of the team is like, ah, we'll do it Monday, you know, and he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I think, you know, as a military veteran, you bring that to the table is that, hey, I know mm-hmm. what my job is. I don't have to be told yes. what to do. Um, yeah. And uh, and you can also lead the team to, to you know, to pull together and do it. So uh, mm-hmm. I love uh, working with veterans as well, because a lot of them yes. have, a lot of us, you know, they have that skill set that they, that they, uh, they learn in the mm-hmm. military. Wonderful. And that skill set becomes a part of their very fabric and, you know, the way that they conduct leadership. And Mm -hmm. it's very uh, interesting to see that those values and those morals are carried over even when their service is finished. They still have that same discipline that they would have when they were in the active duty in the Navy. So um, it's very, very important that we we embrace people's strong points because I believe that having discipline is, is a strong point. Absolutely. Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah. So what was the worst display? If you can think of one event or one um, situation that you faced, that you really looked at someone and you saw that is the worst display of leadership that I've just noticed. Is there an incident Um, that you can think of? uh, There is. Um, It was on one of my ships uh, where I was uh, uh, sort of a mid-level leader. Um, mid-grade leader. And one of my peers, I just walked in the wardroom one day um, to get a cup of coffee. And the wardroom is where the, the officers sort of work and, and, and eat. Um, and you may sit there and have a cup of coffee. And uh, it's kind of like a lounge slash dining room slash training. Wow. You know, it's all kind of, um, and uh, it's got tables and chairs and, and, and you can sit around. Um, but there had been a meeting and one of my peers um, was somehow angry at that very junior person who had been there for the brief. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, he's a he's a senior officer, mid-grade officer. And this person's a very junior enlisted person, maybe 18, 19 years old. And there's a bunch of other people, both, uh, you know, senior and junior, drinking coffee in the room. Uh, meanwhile, yes. you couldn't even talk because this guy's yelling at this young sailor at the top of his lungs. Um, and the guy was, you could see him, he was standing in tension, he was scared to death, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and he can't talk back to him, he can't push back. Mm-hmm. He tried to get a word in edgewise and got shut down again. Um, mm-hmm. And finally, the, uh, the, uh, one, of us, or one of my friends walked over and, and said, hey, can you guys take this somewhere else? And, uh, um, and then about a month later, that person was no longer part of the crew. The captain had, mm-hmm. had uh, figured out that, that his leadership child wasn't going to change. And so, mm-hmm. uh, so he was out yeah. of a job. So. Um, and that sent a signal, too, to the rest of us that that behavior won't be tolerated. But uh, yeah. but to sit there and watch the fear in that young man's face um, as my co-worker berated him in public uh, was, uh, was, was, was disappointing, you know. I can understand. I can understand that these things happen. They happen in the sure. corporate world as well. Um, and we should really work with leaders to just to adapt. Because I always tell people, you know, even in the ministry – you may want to do the right thing, but there is the, you can do the right thing, but you might do it the wrong way. So right, there's a right. wrong way to do the right thing. The intention might be good, 
But the way that we convey ourselves, we should always check and recheck that when working, especially with people. Absolutely. And then, you know, ask peers, um, you know, what do you think about my leadership style? You know, yeah. maybe ask your subordinates. You know, we've gone through a couple of evolutions in the Navy of the sort of 360 evaluation where your yes. peers and your subordinates get a questionnaire about your leadership style. And then you get a debrief. I've had one of those. And uh, it was generally pretty positive. But there are a couple of folks that, that uh, I had to sort of swallow hard and say, am I, am I yeah. really doing that? You know, um, and so it was very valuable to me to, uh, to have that feedback. Um because generally, if you're getting feedback from your from your superiors or your boss, it's either in a very formal setting, um, yes. or they're just uh, you know debriefing like an evaluation or a fitness report or something like that. Um, yeah. Most of the time, but uh, yeah, so that that that's one thing that I would you know if I would recommend something that as if you're leading a team, you know the Germans mm-hmm. have a great tradition on their. Uh, I went I, in my I did an exchange tour with the German Navy, okay. and uh, on the sailboat, the captain of the boat had twelve crew members, and we did a sailing trip around Denmark. Uh, and every yeah. day at noontime, we would all get a glass of sherry um, and oh, wow. come topside and gather together. Um, uh, and then uh, as long as there was alcohol or, or you know liquid in your glass, you could say whatever you wanted to to the captain. Um, and it was not <laughs> attributional. And, and some of these German sailors would say things. I'm like, I would never say that to my commanding officer, <laughs> right? Um, and, uh, and he just took it in stride. And it was a fantastic way to get, you know, feedback from the lowest levels of, of how things were going, you know, and it could be as simple as, Hey, we're out of food. You know, it was kind of funny on the sailing trip. One time we had water and beer. Um, and it was yeah. so hot that we drank all the water, but we were underway for like three days. And the only liquid on board was beer. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, that was tough, but, uh, <laughs> that um, was interesting. Yeah, so I, I thought that was a neat tradition, you know? Um, yeah. but, uh, wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm thinking, you know, in the corporate world, we call it um, creating a psychological safe space. That's when people right. are able to sit around a table, you know, just say really what they feel and think. Sure. So now I'm thinking it's so interesting because the German ship or the German custom, they use cherry to create a psychological safe space. I think that's amazing. <laughs> I'm I thought remember. about that. That's, 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 a, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, <laughs> Great. Yep, yep. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. So now on the other side, what was the best display of leadership that you've seen that really touched your heart? I, I've seen a lot, you know. Um, uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, I thought that thing with taking the selfie and sending it out to the parents, you know, was, was very uh, moving, you know, on a, on a more, uh, you know, Navy note. Um, one of my commanding officers, uh, um, Rich Nolan, when we were doing, when a, if a person falls overboard, there's a protocol to drive the ship around in a circle and put a boat in and pick them up. And uh, oh. there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to it. But at the end of the day, you have to drive the ship in a circle. Mm-hmm. And uh, and sometimes we find that challenging. And so Rich was, uh, he says, look, I, I have a boat at home. Let me show you how this is done. So as the commanding officer of a, of a thousand, you know, a, a ten thousand yeah. ton destroyer with a hundred thousand horsepower. Um, wow. he kicked everybody off of the entire steering, uh, com, uh, compound and took the <laughs> throttle, uh, valve re- uh, lever and the wheel, yeah. and he drove the ship in a circle and he nailed it, you know? Um, and so that wow. took confidence, right? Um, but yeah. it also took competence, right? And so that's one of the things I think we haven't talked about in leadership is, uh, you know, if you're going to be a good leader, you have to be competent in what you're doing. You have to know, you have to read, you have to research, you have to learn, um, and you yes. have to sometimes be the technical expert, you know, um, yes. one of the things, one of the things I would often do, um, that I took from Rich and, and from another captain is, uh, I would just wander into like the, or the watch floor and sit down next to a radar operator, um, yeah. and start asking, I would say, Hey, tell me, tell me how you set the radar up, you know, t- start talking about his, 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 his actual ongoing work. And, and that gave, mm-hmm. I kind of knew the answers myself, but I, I, uh, you know, he got to demonstrate his proficiency. Um, and I was also able to pick up on any gaps or weaknesses in his proficiency as well. So, uh, um, and then I would hear later, Hey, the captain came down and asked me, you know, sat down with me for an hour. You know? <laughs> um, and so I learned stuff, but, uh, but I became mm-hmm. a better, better leader because now I understand. And then, and then usually they would tell me some of the challenges, Hey, you know, why aren't you doing this? Well, I can't get the part right. Or, uh, or, or there's, you know, this, this maintenance procedure takes two hours and, and they only allow to be one hour to do it, you know? And yeah. so uh, you can, you can get some feedback that, uh, now when that goes straight from a junior person to the captain, sometimes a lot of people feel left out or angry about it, that, uh, <laughs> you have to make sure there's no retribution to that, that person for, 
for saying yeah. that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, and learning as a leader, I mean, it never stops, John. We have to yeah. extend our skill set and our, our knowledge every day. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and the last piece of that, I think, that kind of, it kind of fits in that discussion is this whole concept of, uh, you know, of diversity, right, and understanding. I think, uh, you know, one of the places where I think I kind of fell short um, now that I'm retired and have been engaging with, with uh, uh, minority sailors, uh, female sailors, and listening to some of their uh, concerns, um, I think I was so focused on the mission during my active duty days that maybe some of that stuff either I didn't think about it because I didn't have to, or I thought about it but moved on to something else. Um, and it's very easy um, if you haven't, uh, you know, a couple examples that, that I've seen out there of late that have, uh, you know, uh, how do we deal with pregnancy in the Navy? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can't be pregnant on a ship and, and yet you have to have a career. So how do you balance that? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and then some of the stuff that, you know, so I kind of thought about that, but the whole thing about postpartum, postpartum depression, um, mm-hmm. the effect on your body, uh, yeah. physical, yeah. physical training, um, yeah. those things were sort of just not on my radar when I was in the Navy. You know, I look back and I'm like, you know, they should have been, yeah. um, the same thing, um, with, uh, with minorities, you know, um, yeah. there, there was a great, I was at a symposium the other day from the joint women's leadership symposium. And one of the, oh. uh, one of the speakers said, you know, um, some of us run on a flat track and some of us run on an obstacle course. Um, mm-hmm. and yet we're all expected to get to the end at the same time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and maybe you should recognize that. And so, uh, you know, um, we, uh, we have, I think we're pretty good. You know, I, I tell a story where I met a young former sailor out in, in, a, in a car dealership. He was working there after he got out of the Navy. And I just, yeah. was, you know, we had some time and I said, Hey, so what's different? What, what's different between here and the Navy? And without hesitation, you know, he's probably 26, 27 years old. He goes racism. And I'm like, wow. I said, was it that bad in the Navy? Said, no, no, it's worse out here. He said, in the Navy, I felt part of the team and, and accepted. There were people that were idiots, but, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I felt, you know, part of the team. He goes here. Um, there, there's no way that I would be talking to you if there was a white salesman available, you know? Um, My goodness. and so, uh, um, it's interesting, you know, that, that that's just one anecdote, but, uh, um, so I think, you know, um, it's always, it's dangerous sometimes when you try to point out that we could be doing better. That doesn't mean that we're not doing well. Um, yeah. but I think the perspectives are different. And if you, if you haven't Thank felt you. them from that perspective, um, yeah. You have to have empathy, right? Um, I think that's an important mm-hmm. leadership skill is, uh, hey, uh, I, I haven't been through what you have, but let me try to understand, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one one article I'm especially proud of uh, that I can share. It's called Leadership Means Listen. That's, that's called Shut Up and Listen. Um, wow, but, uh, you know, a lot of times leaders feel like that, that, that their job is to tell people what to do or how they, you know, how to, how to behave or, or basically do most of the talking. And, uh, yeah. um, what's that saying? The Lord gave you two ears and one mouth, you know, so that's about the <laughs> ratio. Um, but, uh, but listening to your sailors and, your, and the folks around you, um, mm-hmm. at one, it, uh, you learn something. Um, mm-hmm. and two, they're going to go back and tell their coworkers and their spouse mm-hmm. and their whatever, Hey, he, Hey, they listen to me, you know? Um, wow. And so to me, there's no, there's no greater compliment than for people to say that about someone that, uh, yeah. that, you, that you'll listen, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's a skill that many of us are still working on, especially leaders, you know, lead big teams. So to the right. audience, if you're a leader, uh, John Cordell has an article called Shut Up and Listen. And let's apply that when you work with our teams. Let's shut up a bit and listen to them. And, you right. know, let's. Uh, give them a chance to to take the lead and to show us how innovative they can be. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, one of, one of my friends, uh, uh, he, he was a vice admiral in the Navy, but he was also a friend and a shipmate. Uh, I was arguing with somebody one time and I was clearly losing and, uh, and just making it worse. And he pulled me aside <laughs> and said, hey, John, sometimes you should never resist the urge to not speak. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, stop talking. You're making it worse, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, no, yeah. I think that's, that's an important piece of the puzzle for, for any kind of leader mm-hmm. is, uh, is the ability mm-hmm. to listen, you know. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, in essence, he was telling you in a nice way to shut up. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I love that. John's, that's why he made five several. He's very diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wonderful approach that he took. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, John, does your current leadership style differ, differ from the leadership style that you adhere to when you were younger? I can see that, 
you know, you, you focused more now on the minorities and also looking at women that are sailors, you know, and, and really looking back to the things that you've learned over the years, helping us in the audience to learn more about leadership, you know, through your experience. What were the things that you kind of did when you were a young leader, when you started out, and how has that changed until this point in time where we are here today? That, that's a tough one, you know, um, because people always ask, can leaders be born or can they be trained? Yes, and, that was uh, my next and, question. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know I read your questions ahead of time. But, <laughs> but, uh, um, but at the end of the day, I don't know the answer to that. You know, I think uh, yeah. I think in many ways, um, I think if, if, the, if the ensign me met the captain me, there would be a lot of commonality in the way that we approach things. You know, I, I can still remember um, some of my peers give me a hard time because uh, – I was down, you know, climbing underneath an engine when the folks were doing work down there. Uh, and one of them said, Hey, you're an officer. Your job is not to get dirty. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, you're supposed to be up here, you know, watching and supervising, not down there, you know? Yeah. And I said, well, that, that's no fun. You know, I don't want to do that. And so, and that's the same thing I did as a captain. So there's a lot of things that are the same. I think uh, I was a little more prone to anger, I think, uh, and, mm -hmm. and to use that authoritative, you know, I'll still, I, you know, great learning experience. Um, uh, I was uh, an officer of the watch, you know, supervising the watch team. And I gave an order to uh, over the, over the announcing system to shut a valve out in the engine room. Um, yeah. And then you can see the valve indicator. And, uh, and so I, I waited about two minutes and then it wasn't shut. And so I gave the order again. Um, and then uh, about two minutes later, I gave it again, but really, you know, getting louder and meaner on the, on the announcing <laughs> system. And my, uh, my the, the senior watch stander, uh, he's going to call the senior chief. He came up and he threw the door open. He goes, come with me, sir. Um, and he took me down underneath the deck plate where this sailor was sweating in this 150 degree humid atmosphere, wow. trying to shut this giant valve. Um, yeah. It took like 200 turns. He's like, get down there wow. and see how hard it is to shut that valve. Um, and uh, now this was someone who worked for me. Right. But he was like, yeah. hey, get down there. And uh, and I'm like, wow, I guess I, you know, I didn't understand what he would, what it took to do that task. And yet here I am berating people for not doing it. So, you know, I wouldn't do that now. But uh, yeah. um, I think uh, I think I think that, that book that I talked about where you make a list of stuff and just sort of refine it. Um, but there's a great book out there called The Nightingale Song. That Nightingale kind of gets into this. The Nightingale Song, and it yeah. it, uh, it it goes through. Um, it takes a group of Naval Academy uh, midshipmen, and it, and they all ended up in, in high levels of leadership in the in the in the government. Um, yeah. And uh, and it traces their individual. And John McCain, who you probably know, the senator John McCain, uh, recently passed away, uh, was also a naval aviator. Um, he was one of that group. One was a Secretary of Defense. One was Secretary of you know, they're really high up. Um, but there was an animosity that, that traced back from their a boxing match at the Naval Academy and the way they approached it that, that manifested itself when they were in national leadership positions 40 years later. Um, oh. And uh, and so the book kind of explores how how some things just don't change. If you're a jerk when you're 20, yeah. you're, you're probably going to be a jerk when you're 50. And then if yeah. you're a jerk when you're 50, you probably were a jerk before. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, uh, that's... Uh, that's a, a challenge, I think. But I think yeah. we teach a lot of leadership in the Navy and we try to do it through mm -hmm. best practices and, and see stories mm -hmm. and examples. But uh, um, uh, people slip through sometimes, you know. Yes. But, uh, um, and it's but, no, a choice. I think I've learned a lot. And, it's yep, a choice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people have different, you know, I mean, I, I relieve a captain. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, there were a couple of officers that he thought were fantastic that I didn't think much of and then vice versa. Yeah. And so... I think we were both good leaders, but we had different opinions on what, you know, mm -hmm. we expected of our, of our folks. Um, yeah, so uh, that's a tough one. Um, and, yeah. and, and as you know, um, one person may have a reputation as a good leader, but then if you talk to someone else, then they don't think that of him or her, yeah. you know? Um, so uh, what is good leadership? I don't know. You know, I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> we can, we can talk about it, but, uh, but it might be different for different people too. Yeah. We're still figuring it out as we go along. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Keep learning. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tell me, you know, John, what's next for you? Um, you know, I think uh, there's some interesting dynamics with the government uh, side of things that uh, okay. um, in a government job, you can make a difference, uh, but it takes time, you know, um, bureaucracies move at their own pace. I, I kind of joke that the Navy is a giant ship with a very small rudder. Um, and so, uh, um, for me, for, 
you know, for me, for me personally, um, you know, I've, I've been between my, my father's service and mine. I was telling you, uh, I think I've been in the Navy for 50, 54 of my 60 years. Um, and, uh, wow. and so I think I have about three, three to five years left in the tank where I, I can put mm-hmm. the kind of motivation into it that, I, that it needs for the job. Um, and I can see some results and then I think it's time to move to something else, whether it's, uh, um, uh, you know, writing or speaking or consulting or, or just doing nothing, you know, I don't know yet, but, uh, um, my wife and I like to travel. And, uh, and so, you know, I think there's some other options out there. Uh, my friend Keith Green, who wrote a great book that I would recommend, uh, called, called Black Officer, White Navy, talks about the racial inequities when he was growing up. Um, he's on my case to write a leadership book, so maybe I'll do that. Um, and, uh, um, you know, you, you've made me think about some stuff that will help me down that road. Um, yeah. But for now, you know, I, I honestly, I, I have said this like, like five times at different points in my career. Um, I can't think of something I'd rather be doing right now. And so why quit? Why, why? You know, I don't want to learn how to be a banker or, a, or a, you know, um, I, I, I kind of have something I'm decent at and, uh, and, and, and why not keep doing it, you know? Yeah. And you're good at it. I mean, look at the, look at the roles that you fulfilled over the years. Your expertise is in that and you are training up the leaders of tomorrow. So using that skill set, I mean, it took you years to build up that skill set and just to jump to something else now would really not uh, suffice. So I agree with you. Keep on giving to the Navy and, uh, you know, keep on shaping new leaders because they need that direction. And everything has changed in our society. They need that wholesome leadership that we learned when we were younger. Um, You know, a lot of things fell away over the years. And I think I think you really bring I know you are really bringing a lot of knowledge to the people that you work with. Well, thanks. I try. I appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> also, because you write such lovely articles, if you want to be an author one day, I'm sure you're going to write a fabulous book. So don't don't uh, put that on the shelf. Do that. And public speaking would also be a very good avenue for you. Just on the side, you know, extra. Right, right. No, thanks. No, opportunities like this are great. I, I really enjoy the conversation. And, uh, and hopefully people will get something out of it uh, down the road. So, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. They will. They will. Thank you so much. And my last question to you is, do you have any words of wisdom for the audience? Something in your heart, something in your spirit that you feel you want to relate to them? Um, sure. Just a couple things. Um, you know, a, uh, um, a speaker at one of my graduation ceremonies um, came and gave a talk where he talked about the way the Navy always focuses. There's a saying in the Navy called ship, shipmate self, Right as the order of, of things, of priorities. Um, oh, yes. and, uh, and so put the ship first and then your shipmates and then yourself. Um, and that, that's an awesome way to look at things because at some point you may have to sacrifice, you know, we, we took an oath that said, I'm prepared to give my life in defense of my country, you know, um, yeah. and that's a pretty big deal. Um, but he also said, Hey, when you are in a leadership position, you have to think differently. You have to put yourself and then the shipmates and then the ship. Um, and here's why he said, because if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't eat right, if you don't sleep right, if you get overly stressed or overly tired and you don't exercise, um, you will fail. Um, yes. and when you fail, um, you take down the entire crew and you could lose the ship. Um, and so, um, there's sometimes I have, you know, many of my friends and, and, and acquaintances, you see them, they're just run ragged, right? They're, they're, they're tired. They're, they're, they're. Um, you know, their fitness is terrible. They're not sleeping. They're working crazy hours. Um, yeah. They're just stressed out, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and uh, when you're in that condition, um, sometimes it's a point of pride. You know, I know in the, in, the, in the financial industry, in the medical industry, you know, there's this thing about, well, if you're not working 12, 14 hour days and, and weekends, then, you know, you're not, you're not going to rise. Um, yeah. But, uh, but that also just destroys your, your personal life and, and your, and your mm-hmm. family. And, uh, and so if I had one piece of advice, it would be, you know, take care of yourself, whether that means taking time to work out, um, look at your diet, look at your sleep cycles, get a sleep test, figure out whether you have sleep apnea uh, or some mm-hmm. of those things. Um, find something to do for mental health. Um, yeah. You know, uh, it's funny. I was talking with someone the other day that, um, that, uh, that, you know, physical health, we go to the doctor, you know, for any little thing we go yeah. for a physical 
Um, and if you ask someone, have you ever had a physical health problem? Of course, they're going to say yes. And they'll, they'll show you their achy leg or their scars. Yeah. But if you yeah. ask them, have you, had, have you ever had a mental health problem? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, yeah. And so the closer we get where mental health is treated like mm-hmm. physical health, that you think yeah. about it, you talk about it, you maintain it. Um, and maybe you talk to an expert now and then, whether you're, whether you're in a crisis or not, you know, um, that would be my advice. I think is is, uh, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, um, Mm -hmm. are you taking care of yourself? Um, because if you don't, um, there's no way you can take care of others. Um, Mm -hmm. and the last piece is the piece about listening. You know, I think, uh, the older we get, you know, I I look back and the gap between stuff I thought I knew and what I actually knew at the time, um, (laughs) just continues to grow. (laughs) <laughs> and so, uh, you know, a little bit of humility and, uh, and listening will go a long way. Um, yeah. But that would be sort of my word of wisdom is take care of yourself. Fantastic. Fantastic. And yes, I agree. The humility is very important. And we all keep learning. You know, we're never going to get to the place where we know everything. So it's okay yeah. if, we, if we learn continuously and to ask if you don't know, if you're a leader of a team and there's someone on the team that has, you know, more information on a certain topic, don't be shy to ask that person. They are better in that area and, you right, know, right. And let them take the lead in that instance. Yeah. Yeah. My, my wife tells me all the time, you know, don't be the smartest guy in the room, you know, because uh, – <laughs> It's right. Take, everybody else, you, you, you might you might get your point in, but then uh, you'll lose in the long run. You know. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> Those are also words of wisdom from Mrs. Cordo. I I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get her on your show. She's the real leader in that. Yeah. Uh, that would actually but, be lovely because I would love to hear from her side. You know, being a spouse of someone in the navy. So we should set that up, John. <laughs> okay, I, I will. I will talk to her. She's a little under the weather right now. She fell and broke her shoulder last week, so uh, oh, we're we're in the recovery yeah. mode. So, um, yeah. Oh, but she's doing well. She's doing. Care of her. Is she doing I'm trying. Well? Yeah, she yeah. is. I think my cooking. I think she's about ready to get better, so she can doesn't have to eat my cooking anymore. But, uh, <laughs> But, we'll, but we're a good team. We'll get through it. Um, you are. You but, are uh, 30 years. Amazing. Amazing. So as soon as she's better and she's ready, we're going to invite her on here to meticulous. You just let me know. And okay. I just want to say, from my side, I want to thank you because I reached out to you for the session. And, you know, we've been talking about leadership things on LinkedIn. And I remember the other evening, I, I struggle not to overwork. And I, I don't know why it is, but I always want to do as much as I can in a day. And it was late night here, and I sent, I think I sent you the question, so I sent you something, <laughs> and your, your, your question to me was, isn't Are it you still late? Up? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. yeah. And you're like, but you need to sleep. <laughs> right, right. Yep. Yeah. It all comes back to yeah. sleep. You're right. It does. It oh, does. Thank funny. you for imparting that into my life, you know, and also for caring for, for other people's health because you are a very sincere person and I know you're making an impact. And I just want to say that made an impact on me to sit down and say, yes, I need to sleep. So I've been trying to get more sleep and it's it's improving my life. So thank you for that importation of knowledge. That's great to hear. (laughs) You made my day. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. And then I want to ask if you were the captain on a ship and let's say I'm a sailor, I'm a woman sailor, a female sailor, how would I greet you, for instance, if we had a meeting? Do you salute or how do you do that? Um, If it's out in public uh, and you're in uniform and you have a cover on, a hat, um, then you salute. Um, you would salute okay. me and say, good morning, sir. And I would salute you back and say, good morning. Um, on the ship, it's usually just, uh, uh, good morning. Good morning, captain. Good morning, sir. You know, usually there's a formality there. Um, but, uh, yeah, just good morning, sir. How you doing? Um, and, uh, you know, when I, when, I, when I, we talked about the listening part, so one of the things I tell folks is, uh, you know, most of the time that interaction is, uh, is, is very short, right? Hey, how are you doing yeah. today? Oh, doing fine. Um, and then what are you up to? Oh, nothing. And then you kind of keep walking. And what I tell people is, uh, you know, that's the time you have an opportunity to stop that sailor and say, what's bugging you today? What's pissing you off today? Um, and be ready to to listen because you're going to get an earful because something is on their mind that's stopping them from being as productive as they could. So, um, that's what, whenever I talk to, to different audiences about leadership, I usually print that article out. And I tell that story and say, that's my gift to you um, yeah. is uh, wow. try that third question and, uh, and see what it does yeah. for you. 
um, kind of yeah. like we talked about. So uh, always, yeah, always. So, so John, is it okay if we salute each other? Yes, ma'am. I salute you for what you're doing. Thank you. Do I do it like this? That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I never done that before. I always wanted to oh, do okay. that. <laughs> It was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for everything that you've taught us. And I know your ventures are going to all be successful. And we are waiting for Mrs. Cordell for her session when she's ready. Okay, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Meticulous <laughs> Moments audience, thank you so much for joining us in this wonderful session. We will be sharing John's uh, contact details at the end of the session. Reach out to him, network with him, read his articles, and cheer him on as he makes a big difference in people's and other leaders' lives. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care.